Well, there we go. And hi, it's good to have you with us. Thanks for joining us tonight at nine o'clock or six o'clock or seven o'clock, wherever you are. Um, this is Danielle. Hello. I'm Lee. Um, and uh, we thank you for joining us. We're uh, going to talk to you a little bit about how you can get more patients into your office. Uh, and of course, we're, we represent the Institute for Dental Specialists. That used to be the AAIP. Uh, and now we are a broader based group. We will be going in different parts of the country and we'll be close to you sometime between now and December and you'll get notification of that. We'll have some good two day forums where you can learn more about how to uh, improve the, um, the business aspect of your, of your specialty practice. But tonight we want to talk about the business aspect of your specialty practice. We want to show you what can be done and what you can do in order to be able to improve your own practice. And so with that, let's get started. Good. Okay. Hi, Nick. Nick, Nick asked us if we got started. Yes, yes, Nick, we are there and thank you. And, uh, and I appreciate your saying that. Let me get on to our, our um, webinar and let me get on to this there we go okay so let's talk a little bit about what you can do and i want to talk to you about the problem probably daniel will talk about the problem from your perspective because we do have um staff members on as well and frankly doctors you need to hear it from the staff members perspective anyway so this was a referral practice. It was just uh, me and um, and a, nice, a lot of nice women working here. And we had a great practice. Practice uh, generated at least 40 referrals a month. That's the way it was going. And frankly, it was uh, often very close uh, to 50 referrals. Sometimes we get 60 referrals a month. And things were going well. And frankly, there were times that I wanted to bump, bump up the practice and I could. You know, I could have lunches, we could have dinners, we could do massages, we could do um, lectures in, in, in offices and do in-service and all those types of things, and we could bump up the numbers. We discovered a long time ago, now it's probably around the year 2000, 2001, that no matter what we tried, we couldn't bump up the numbers anymore. Right. Yep. Yeah. Um, and the numbers started dropping just a little bit. For many, you said, all right, well, all we have to do is do something and the numbers will go back up. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not the type of guy who's going to go out and, and have big encampments and cruises or weekends with, with, um, with families. I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not going to be the, the major entertainer. And there's some who do that very well. I don't. Um, you know, I, I I've got my own thing, and frankly, um, part of that is not not necessarily that doesn't mean I don't like that. This doesn't mean I don't go to dental society meetings. Doesn't mean that I didn't take them on trips from time to time. But I'm not one who um, would socialize with um, with um, dentists purposely or try to get them into my into my club. Never have been. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> um, still not. Um, which is fine. I'm happy. So, what kind of a struggle did you have? What 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 were you doing? Well, I mean, my my job is to make sure that you you know stay happy and positive in the practice. And so, it, when it when and you all know when you get to the point to where your referrals are becoming stagnant or your referrals are starting to drop, it is a very scary thing because you base a lot on your practice and your personal, uh, depending on what's coming into your practice. So that starts to to drop. Not only does it start to drop, but you also start hearing things and getting different responses from your referral like i'll take care of that or only take care of this or don't worry about that or you know they start telling you how to treat the patient and you never like that either no and um yeah uh, patients telling me how to treat them yeah i'll listen how patients want to want to be treated as long as it's within the parameters right. of good dentistry but having a dentist a general dentist telling me right. what was correct and what wasn't or right he would do the implants and I'd do the perio exactly. or right. his hygienist is just as good as my hygienist. Right. They both trained in the same school and right. therefore uh, there's no reason for a patient to come back to our office right. anymore. I mean, you always enjoyed the communication with the dentist. You always enjoyed that communication, that relationship. And it was starting to get to where that was becoming a bit bitter and, and difficult. And 
Um, you weren't looking forward to those phone calls. You weren't looking forward to the meetings and they didn't even want to meet anymore. So it was just getting to where it wasn't the way it used to be. So um, I don't know which came first, the drop in the referrals or you just giving up on the dentist because you don't want to work with them anymore, one or the <laughs> other. But he didn't enjoy it anymore. So when you're not But really... I didn't give up. I no, mean, of course not. You know, we started marketing in 2004. Right. And we didn't become a fully independent practice until 2012, 2013. Right. Right. So it isn't like we didn't gradually go into this. And I think that part of, part of that is the scary portion. Exactly. You know, oh, I've got to cut ties. No, you don't. We're not talking about that tonight. We'll make that a subject for another another talk. But the answer is you can do all of all of this gradually, proving to yourself along the way that it's working and actually right. working better for you. And frankly, there's a lot of training that's involved to get to the point where you can be independent. but uh, Well, this whole thing is about doing something and not doing nothing, not laying on your back and not doing nothing and not giving up and just saying, well, it's just not going to be the same anymore. Because I think that's the biggest thing about what we do is that we are a working, practicing periodontal office that made it through that transition. And instead of being scared and saying, okay, well, maybe it's time to retire or sell my practice or, get, or go smaller, uh, we did the opposite. We grew twice as big as we were before um, by moving forward, we made the choices that we did. Um, and not everybody has to, to make the same choices that we did, but if you make the same steps that we did, you can only get better. That's right. So when I'm involved, and we, we've used the term quarterback a, a lot of times, you know, who's the quarterback? And you know that there are certain organizations that have taught, taught the general dentist they're the quarterback. And unfortunately, some periodontists or periodontal organizations have also subscribed to that, that the general dentist is the quarterback. I don't feel that um, everybody's qualified to be a quarterback. And very often, we're concentrating on the quarterback. Sometimes we're really concentrating on this more than anything else. And how do you deal with that? Okay. You know how you've had to deal with that. You know how you had to deal with that probably today. I don't have to deal with that. And that's the point that I can do the best treatment and prescribe the best treatment for patients, working with the best doctors, coming out with the best result, and not have to concentrate on that. So I'm curious about you. So let's do our first survey, okay? So let's talk about what areas of your practice you have most attention on. We're going to run a little poll. And as soon as I figure out how to push the button, we're going to do that. So everybody, everybody has a chance to vote in just a second. There we go. So you can pick whatever you can. This is multiple. You can check all of the boxes that you want to check on, and you tell me which things are the most important to you. What is going on? So go ahead and vote. You should have that music playing. I should. Good. Wow. All right, this is a very interesting poll. Okay, we'll keep the we'll keep it open for another five seconds, and then we'll close the poll, and we'll show you the results. Very good. Looks like the same problems that we were having. Yeah, same problems. Right? <laughs> okay, so we'll close the poll, and let's share that information. Okay. So you can see it up front. I hope you can see it. Uh, and that means the areas that you have the most concentration on are your referrals are down in number, more probably in quality. And second is income of production is down. That's or that's what you have your attention on. And then third is your staff keeps on running you. Mm. Um, that's probably a topic for another webinar too. We're not going to cover that tonight. Well, thank you. That's good. So let's go back and we're going to talk a little bit more about what uh, you can do in your practice. Now, what, uh, this is a great quote that we have here, and that's the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Jim Rohn is a, is a supreme marketer, not in dentistry, he's a supreme marketer all over. Um, and you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Just think about that. And think about the time that you work with somebody that you really respected and how that average went up a little bit. Maybe your mind expanded a little bit. Maybe you thought of some new ideas. Maybe you implemented something new, some new strategy that you hadn't done before because you raised that average based upon the people that you associated with. 
Now, there are four reasons patients see dentists, okay? And, and uh, those of you who've seen, seen our lectures, you know that every lecture that I give, <laughs> I concentrate on these areas because we have to understand that people are not here for guided tissue regeneration. They're not here for root coverage. They're not here for implants. They're here for one of four reasons. They want to smile. They want to chew. They want to be free of pain. And they don't want their mouths to stink. Those are the four reasons. That's it. So we're going to talk about some solutions to, that you can exercise in order to be able to get people to see you for one or all of those reasons. Okay. Number one is a controlled phone presence. I want to show you, in fact, what occurs in offices. And this is a dramatization. I understand that. But what occurs in offices around the country as we survey your offices, which we do. Thank you for calling Dr. Sheldon Sheldon and Furtado's office. Our business hours are 8.30 to 5, Monday and Tuesday. We are closed on Wednesday. Business hours are 8 to 12 on Thursday and 8 to 2 on Friday. Our office is closed for lunch from 1 to 2. So call us back during regular business hours. Thank you. Okay. One of the biggest problems is you don't answer the phone. Frankly, if you're taking breaks for lunch, if you're closing the office on Friday, if you say your girls have to go home at 4.30 when everybody else goes home at 4.30 and that's what time they call for appointments, if you're not answering the phone at that time, you're missing patients. If you just keep your office open, your office phone lines open, Monday through Thursday from 8 to 6, yes, 8 to 6, not 8 to 5, 8 to 6, and you answer your phone on Fridays, many of you take Fridays off, you're going to find more new patients who are calling you because if they don't get an answer from you, they're doing just what was demonstrated here. They're shopping websites until they get another answer. Oh, I know. The, the doctor referred to you. No, the doctor didn't refer to you. They referred to a periodontist. They gave three names. Or even if they gave your name, if you're not answering the phone, patients do their own, in quotes, unquotes, research, and they find the periodontist that they're going to go to. How do we know? because patients see us unreferred. Remember, we've been there. Remember, we've done all of this. And this, this, the, the IDS is a two-part system. It's Dr. Sheldon, and it's me as an office manager. So his part on this, as you'll see going through this, and if you become a member, you'll see even more, is Dr. Sheldon will talk about um, mostly how to get that patient calling your office and how to get that patient um, plan, a treatment planned uh, in a way that they can accept. My part is how to get your staff trained to answer that phone call so that they do schedule the new patient examination because doing this, I'll tell you, um, I get doctors that call all the time and they'll say, I, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure my staff is really good. They answer the phone just fine. And most of the time, my very first phone call goes to a voicemail every single time. Um, and I'll try it a few times. And, in, and out of four times, three, two or three times will go to a voicemail. So it's extremely important. And again, we are everything that we are teaching you here, we have gone through. And it was ways that we doubled our practice. It's ways that we went from being dependent on referral sources um, and not doing as well to not being dependent on the referral sources, getting the patients ourselves and growing our practice just that way. So remember, as we're going through this, it's not just things that we've heard. These are things that we did to make that difference. So what's the purpose of a phone schedule? And we're going to show you an item right now, which I hope is going to help you understand. I hope your staff um, would appreciate staff members. Take a look at this. All right, we're back. So the why is of that video of why we uh, do things that particular way. Um, of course, we cover um, in our program. We have many videos like that, many scenario videos, because your staff can tell you that there are a handful of things that happen um, consistently when a patient calls your office. They're concerned about wanting a certain type of treatment, like a root canal. Um, they think uh, they think that they need to call a certain kind of office. They um, are concerned about insurance. They're concerned about cost. Uh, they're concerned about the new patient examination fee. Uh, so there's there's a handful of consistent issues that happen and we do help 
well, we train your staff to get through those barriers and to get the patient to understand they're going to be going to the, the best place possible for this examination and for the treatment that they're looking for. So that's, that's well, I, I think that's the best part of the IDS program is staff do. training. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> that's why it's number two is train your staff. Number one, answer your phone. Number two, train your staff and how to answer the phone because the purpose of the phone schedule is to schedule the patient, okay? It's not to make conversations, not to answer questions. Okay. Notice what Jennifer did in order to get Joy to schedule. Control. She, she continually controlled the conversation and got the patient to schedule. Right. Your front desk person, the person who's answering your phone, needs to be trained just as well as you need to be trained, as your hygienist needs to be trained, as your assistants need to be trained. You know, answering the phone is a skill. Okay, so let's talk about the components of attraction. One is differentiation. You need to differentiate yourself not from other periodontists. You need to differentiate yourself from every other dentist in your community. You have to show that you're different because you're asking patients to choose you mm -hmm. and not necessarily to choose you as a periodontist. Periodontist to choose you as a dentist or a dental diagnostician mm -hmm. or a director of dentistry because the patients that we attract are patients that are in pretty sorry shape periodontally, sometimes from a carry standpoint. Um, and there are a lot of patients out there right. who have left the system. And frankly, that's a lot of the patients walking into our office. And we show you how to do that inside your practice with the patients that you have, because they know people, and how to do that outside your practice to people who don't even know that you exist. Yeah. Raise your public relations. You need to have a bigger, a bigger footprint in your community. And there are ways in which we do that. We're going to talk about one of those ways tonight. And of course, marketing, and that's internal marketing, as Danielle said, or external marketing. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about differentiation. Let's look at your public relations. And one of the primary ways in which you differentiate yourself is by writing something. Writing a one-page article on dental implants, a run, write one-page article on soft tissue grafting, on root coverage, on guided tissue regeneration, on sinus lists, whatever you want to do, have that piece of paper available. Because guess what? What happens when the patient calls the office? The written word, the written stuff that you do um, is one thing. Training your staff how to use those is another thing. Because we use Dr. Sheldon's writings, which started out as uh, paper, then handmade booklets, and then now the books that he has. We use those for patients who, when on the phone, they still want to think about it or um, they... Um, they're just not sure yet. I'll send you Dr. Sheldon's book, his newest book. He's, he's written three books. Um, how do you think that makes Dr. Sheldon look to them? Um, so we, we send out those. Also, when a patient is in the office and maybe they're not accepting right away, maybe they want to go speak to their spouse or, or do, do something else, it, you give them written information that your doctor has, has come up with on uh, crown lengthening, periodontal treatment, implants, uh, all of that. They, they're taking home stuff that your doctor, that you have written and educated on. It's big. It's huge to patients. It, 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 it makes you look like you really know what you're doing. So definitely, yes, we use that. I'm getting uh, from one person, I'm getting that there's no sound. Um, can you let me know via, the, uh, by, by raising your hands that, in fact, you are hearing us. Would you just uh, push push the area where you where you can show that little hand to let us know that you you're hearing us? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I appreciate that. So you are hearing us, Harold. Um, you may want to check the sound on your own computer and see whether, in fact, uh, there may be something there because everybody is hearing us. So I appreciate you letting us know know that. Let's uh, let's continue. So writing a piece of paper, any kind of piece of paper, becomes a a, a significant uh, boon to you because you've written something. How many dentists write something, and then your front desk person can use that um, in order to be able to uh, to help. Uh, 
increase your credibility by sending out with uh, sending something out. I think that's what you said. I was looking at the other things. Is that what you said? That's what I said. Yeah, good. <laughs> if you need help writing, go to upworks.com. Go to your high school te go to a high school English teacher. Go to somebody, write it down and let that person make it readable if you have some difficulty. For fifty dollars you can get somebody to rewrite that five hundred word essay so it becomes clear. You write enough of these essays, you can do a booklet. We did this booklet over 10 years ago. It's a little booklet we put together at home, 14, 16 page booklet of, of little articles that we wrote. And so now you have a booklet that's in your reception room. We've written a book. The booklets still leave the office. <laughs> so yeah. All right. The second way is to provide public service. And one way of providing public service is the charitable giving campaign. So the charitable giving campaign is essentially something you set up with local charities where a patient walks into your office, writes a check to one of those charities in lieu of your examination fee. Mm -hmm. And now what happens? Here's what happens. You get recognized. That's right. A dinner by the American Red Cross as the, getting, at getting something like the Leadership in Medicine Award. Articles in the paper when we reached a certain level of charitable giving, we're up to $170,000 now in charitable giving. That's what happens. We have a whole seminar just on that, and you would be so surprised the attention that you get from giving um, when patients are coming in and, and they're using that uh, charitable giving program. They are just very impressed, and they just love it. Um, and we those those charities that we support and we have been supporting for a long time now, they are so thankful. They they send patients to you and not to mention the recognition we get from newspaper and, and so on and so on. So it's it's we have a whole webinar just on how to implement that successfully into your practice. That's right. Okay. Get the success story written. So any anytime anybody has something that They've said that's nice about you, and they, that happens every day. A success story form. Have a person write up. Would you like to write a success story about that, or would you like to write a Google review about that? Write the, write down that success story. Those words on paper can make a tremendous difference, as you'll see in just a couple of minutes. So there is a success story form. You can make up your own phone form. It's a very simple form with that's our old letterhead. We haven't used that letterhead in I don't know how many years, but. And you get a quote like this. Now, you're not going to get a quote like this every time. But if you didn't ask for the sex success story, would you ever get a quote like this? And what can you do with a quote like this? Just think of all the different ways you can use it. People like to tell stories. They like to tell their own personal stories, particularly when they walked into your office, dental cripples, and they left your office a dental success. And these days, of course, you want to have a HIPAA release form to make sure the success story can be used for internal marketing. And what else? Get a picture. Mm -hmm. Get a picture. It can be a picture on a phone. I don't care. You can use a, a dental camera. That's nicer, but get a nice picture. The patients that are thinking about coming to your office and doing treatment with you, patients that are thinking of, are looking for somewhere to go for their, their need, um, these stories and these pictures uh, are proof to them that you are the one they need to go to or that they're in the right place. Happy patient, happy doctors. We use these in our financial arrangements room. We just have picture after picture yes. after picture like this. So while somebody's deciding whether in fact they're going to get treatment done with you or get big treatment done with you, behind Laura's right shoulder or behind Danielle's right shoulder, they're seeing picture after picture. A digital after frame picture. rotating all smiling. these smiling pictures and smiling doctors that they know Many, many patients have had successful treatment that they love, and that's what this shows. And the success stories are in a binder or, or on the website, different places um, throughout the name of our practice where patients can read all these endless success stories of patients who, who have gone from being um, just shells in their home and not being able to go out and socialize and have a life to getting out there and just, just um, reliving. Very good. All right, and then distribute. 
and there's many different ways of distribution, post office still works. In fact, it works very well because people don't get letters anymore. It's kind of neat. People don't get letters. We have a question. I'll be happy to take the question right now. Can only see you no other picks that you're talking about. Oh, no. Okay. Well, then I'm going to make sure that that's working. And thank mm -hmm. you, Tom. So um, seeing us may not be the best thing. Um, although we're half decent looking. So. <laughs> um, and if you can't see it, we'll just we'll just talk our way through it. Okay. All right. So um, I'll give you the radio description now. You're seeing a newsletter. You're seeing a book that has been uh, developed, and we've also seen a testimonial page on our website. That's how you can use every one of these every one of these pictures. Okay. So let's go to survey number two. What is preventing you from marketing directly to patients? So let's see what the group is saying tonight. Okay, so vote. What's preventing you from marketing directly to patients? Votes are coming in, and thank you, Roger. I appreciate you telling us that you can see everything, so that's good. <laughs> All right. So we'll take another uh, about 10 seconds. Go ahead and vote. Hurry, hurry. <laughs> I feel bad cutting it off. It's going so fast. Yeah, it is. All right. Keep voting. All right. Good. We'll close the poll now. Last minute votes. Okay. We got it. All right. So let's, it always is. let's see what you said. All right. 60%. I don't want to take off my referral well, story. Highest. Oh, 73%. My staff isn't trained to handle the marketing. Amen. That's hey. what happened to us. Uh, yes. Talk about that. Well, we had a great marketing idea to get the attention um, of patients from off the street. Um, and our great idea worked. And the phone started ringing, but we weren't prepared for it. Uh, because as we teach in this program, that patient from off the street is nothing like the referred patient. Nothing. And unfortunately, we learned that backwards. So then we had to panic and stop for a second and say, okay, wait a minute. We need to change things because these patients... You know, these patients are, um, they have been let down. These patients have been through a bad dental experience. These patients gave up a long time ago. Um, and these patients need a lot of work. So it's not like your patient coming from the referral dentist that just needs a little small area taken care of and then they're going to go back. That doesn't exist anymore. These patients almost all need a periodontal treatment because they haven't had a cleaning in 20 years. Um, these patients are missing multiple teeth. These patients um, are ready now to just make a big change. I've waited long enough. I'm, I'm done. I'm sick of this. Um, they want a new smile. They want to eat better and they're ready. So if you are, if your staff is not ready to handle that patient, you're absolutely right. You're, you're going to lose it. That's right. Sorry. It's the second one. I don't want to take off my referral source. And the answer is, and I'll give you my answer. I don't want to work with lousy dentists. I don't. Um, I won't you, you, you decide whether you do or not. Before we started marketing, I met with my favorite dentist right here in this office. And I said, here's what I'm going to do. And I want to refer to each one of you. We're going to rotate the referrals. Do you have any objections to that? Um, how many people would say, how many general dentists would say no to your referrals? And I got to work with the people I want to work with. Now, these are people that yeah. I've been working with for years anyway. So I said, we're just going to bump it up a little bit. What was interesting is my referrals from them were bumped up a little bit too. Because you're feeding them. That's you right. were giving them patients, and so they were giving you back patients, and so it actually worked out better. And so we gradually were able to test the market that way, and that means we were still getting referrals from the B's and C dentists. We were. But we started to be able to test what happened and who we would see as a result of, of doing direct-to-patient marketing. And, you know, I'll repeat it. And there's a whole group of patients out there whole group of patients who are just looking for an expert to help them because they've been burned. They've been burned because of mistreatment, misdiagnosis. You know, they've been burned. And they're reluctant to dip their toe in the water, um, particularly if they don't know who to go to. 
They see you're already a specialist. People see specialists in medicine. We think they see specialists in every field. Just because they, just because the market says you go to the general dentist first, or the profession says you go to the general dentist first before you refer to the periodontist or other specialist, that's not true. And that was what we proved. And not only did we prove it, but this is where we're going to complete four years of the IDS in June. That's what IDS members are saying all over the country. I don't care whether it's big big cities or smaller cities or or you know, it, 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 and it doesn't make any difference whether it's a, it's a younger periodontist or a middle-aged periodontist or an older periodontist or oral surgeon, then in fact, they're finding that they can market directly to patients and they can work with the best dentists. And you don't have to think about what are you gonna say because you did a crown lengthening procedure and now the mar margins are buried two or three millimeters below the gum line. You don't have to figure out what to say when you put an implant in and you've told the patient the patient needs an implant in order to be able to help support the occlusion and then when the final crown is it's is in it's not an occlusion and then you have to figure out what you're going to say or what you're going to do or how you're going to hide your eyes because you don't want to tick off the referral source which is 60 percent the referral source you may not want to tick off may not be the one you want to work with anyway See, because the good referral sources would make sure that it's an occlusion and it, it, that crown was an occlusion. If it's not an occlusion, they'd want to correct it. Those are the kind of dentists that I work with. Those are the kind of dentists I always want to work with. You too. And that's what happens when you start to be able to control the market because the patient is coming into you first. Third one is I don't know how to market. And no, I didn't know how to market before I knew how to market. Um, and I did a lot of the marketing myself. I've got to tell you, much of the marketing, the internal marketing, we still design ourselves, and we've done very well. And for external marketing, we hire some professionals to do that for us. But don't hire the professionals before you train your staff, because that's what the rest of you said. And the big thing on the marketing is uh, we can tell you prior to starting the IDS, we tried m many different marketing, um, what do you call them? Schemes or schemes, ideas, tries, or, or, or even companies. Yep, we you know, did yeah. seminars. Uh, we did uh, conference calls. We did um, um, staff training uh, through the internet. We we bought and tried so many different things, and we took small pieces out of hundreds of things to make what works for periodontists and periodontal practices. Um, so it's that's what we did to make this stuff work. It's not just a copycat program. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you hire us more because of the high, go, you join the IDS more because of what we've rejected, yeah. <laughs> so you don't have to reject it, as well as what's worked and now is working for a lot of people. Okay, so let's hide the poll. Let's go on. Okay, so the first way of marketing directly to the patient is the implant lecture. And essentially, you advertise a dental implant lecture. By the way, patients, potential patients are still attracted to the idea of, of dental implants. Now, once they walk into the dental implant lecture, you can talk about whatever you want. We talk about choice because there is a company that has the name choice in it. And we talk about how the real choice is going to us because we're going to look at you and we're going to diagnose you and treatment plan you. And we can do everything that they advertise on TV Plus, we can save your teeth, so you'll have some options. And we give examples. You know, if you needed cardiothoracic surgery and you went to the cardiothoracic surgeon and the cardiac and, and that surgeon says you need a triple bypass, can you imagine saying to the cardiothoracic surgeon, well, I think I'll go to my general practitioner and see if she can do it cheaper. You know, and it gets a laugh. It's a good line that you can use at your dental implant lecture to give them perspective on what's going on in dentistry and how they compare it to something they already know, which of course is medicine. But remember we talked about picture and success story, and this is part of our dental implant lecture right now. And so that's what Eddie says, and he wrote that success story. 
Steve came in and Steve said, I hear you do dental implants. You've got a good reputation for them. I want you to take out all my teeth and I want you to do dental implants. I said, you don't need any, you don't need dental implants. We can use your teeth as dental implants. And there's crown, there's this crown of bridge work. I don't think that your referring dentist that you like would be very ticked off that you sent that case to them either. Yeah. So they'd be very happy. <laughs> and that's the quote. And can you imagine using a quote like this? Well, I mean, we yeah. show this quote in the operatory. We show this quote of the dental implant lecture. Once you have the picture mm -hmm. and you have the success story, you can name the different ways in which right. you, can, you can use this. John, John, who's a night watchman. You know, we talk about people can't afford dental implants. He's, he's a night watchman. He was a night watchman because he didn't want to meet anybody during the day. During the day, he stayed home. And finally, he was sick of it. He'd had a bad experience when he was about 16 years old and never wanted to see a dentist again. And he was suffering for it. And then we end up with this. A whole different person. A yeah. whole different person. And again, we do a, a webinar just on the implant lecture because there is a correct way of doing it that attracts many people, tons of people in your area that have been looking for a solution. And they read these um, advertisements and they hear about your your lecture and it brings them into your practice and these are patients that are looking for what you do um, they're not just patients looking for something it's for what you do and these are patients qualified and ready to go for that treatment and you can read his success story it took a lot for John to even walk into our office mm -hmm. it was the trained staff that got him to come into the office the very first time he came in for the examination uh he he well, like dr sean said he was a night watchman he didn't have a whole lot of money uh but we you know we worked with him and we uh helped him find solutions and then he came back not too uh, much longer late not too much later and he um found a way uh to to get the treatment that he wanted the implant treatment that he needed to get this to look like this so we were trained to help him get that Peggy is a nurse, and really she could afford anything she wanted, but she wasn't able to get the answers that she wanted. And so when you take Peggy from this to this, and with this kind of a story, imagine how that would resonate with any people that you're working with, any potential patients you're working with. You, had, you saw this quote earlier. So get success stories, take pictures, and distribute them. Okay, the number eight way of doing this is to utilize the internet, particularly utilize Google. And make sure that you're getting your Google reviews up. Remember what you're doing when you're shopping. What do you do when you're shopping? Um, I'm on the internet Googling something near me. <laughs> That's right. And I'm looking at how many stars they have. <laughs> exactly right. And you can look at all of the other sites. Google is the king or the queen whatever you want to call it if people are googling you know if they're binging then get bing reviews if they're yahooing get yahoo reviews but most people are googling get google reviews because google rewards you for good reviews you show up at the top of google maps if you're if, you, if you've got a lot, a lot of good reviews you show up on the first page and so there's a lot of free advertising you get and by the way, go to your uh, go to your Google website. Make sure that you know, I'm talking about the one that's owned by Google, the Google My Business site, and make sure that all of those forms and all those pictures are filled out completely because essentially they're giving you some free advertising. Take advantage of that. And of course, the Google reviews are even better. And by the way, respond to your Google reviews when you get them. That increases your SEO even more. Okay, but there's also ads. You can you know, work with an AdWords provider or do your own ads, and that way you're always at the top of the page. And uh, you can do these yourself. Uh, you can work with Google. Google will provide you with an advisor, or you can work with, uh, with an advertising person to develop the campaign. Next thing is make sure you have an offer on your, on your uh, web page. Make sure that no matter where a patient goes on your website, that offer shows. Okay, and you might be able to read this, $79, and that's exam, x-rays, and CT scan. 
Okay. I don't want to do it for free. I don't. Mm -hmm. I want patients to have some kind of a commitment, but not the $250 commitment, the $400 commitment by the time you get done with FF Max and Full Mouth Series. Let them come in at a fee that shows a commitment, and at the same time, you happen to have a tool which allows you to diagnose and treatment plan better because you can use the CT scan for diagnosis to show where an implant can be placed. Uh, you can use that uh, also for patients have recession. You can show and demonstrate to yourself that there's alveolar in insufficiency. A CT scan is a diagnostic tool, not just a sales tool. It's a diagnostic tool, and the patient can be totally impressed, saying, I never saw anything like that before. And for the amount of money that you save or the patient saves by coming in for $79, you're going to see a lot more patients, a lot more new patients who are going to sign up for the services that they need because you provide them too. So it gives a good opportunity for them to come in. So make sure that offer is not a little button. It's prominent on your website. So those are nine ways. We promised you five ways. We gave you nine ways of, uh, of, of improving your practice. I hope uh, you've, uh, you've, you've uh, taken some notes. And I hope we've been able to get some, some, good, good, uh, um, some good solutions on how you can build up your new patient base. Um, so if you'll give us a few minutes, let's talk about the IDS, the Institute for Dental Specialists. Um, and membership of the IDS is something that that many people are doing. We've had a number of new members come on in the past mm -hmm. uh, couple of months. And essentially, there are two webinars a month, and the webinars, a month, uh, webinars are directed towards some of the things you just, we just talked about. You know, each of, each of the uh, topics we talked about is the subject of a month's worth of webinars, um, which, by the way, are all recorded. And so if you uh, want recordings of all of those, we have all of those recordings for you. And so if you have a particular area that you're interested in, um, you can you can certainly order that. Membership provides you with continuous exposure twice a month, looking at various aspects of the periodontal and specialty practice um, to show how you can change it, how you can change for the better, to give you ideas and to be able to uh, implement new strategies and to grow your practice. And there are links to each of the webinars for later viewing, so that if you can't join us, for the webinars live, which are on Wednesday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern, um, then you get a Dropbox link the next day or the day after. And we want you to have that anyway. You want to have that because the webinars are good for you, but they're great for you and your staff. Our most successful members play these webinars at their staff meetings. Yep. And they'll use the pause button a lot as they take notes on some of the ideas that Danielle and I may have given, and you, they may have their own ideas, how we can implement this and how it would work in, in their particular offices. So the recordings of the webinars are, are essential. Uh, there's the Monday Morning Minute. The Monday Morning Minute essentially is a two-minute motivational piece where we'll talk to you about a particular strategy in the office that's working for us and how it can work for you. You get that by email every single Monday morning. And usually that's something that we have uh, done that week, something that we had encountered, a solution that we came up with, a great idea that we put in that worked for us. And under five minutes, we send you an audio on Monday morning of how it can work for you. And, and I've heard many of our members say they use them in their huddles um, because it does motivate staff and get them going. Yeah. And unlimited email support. So our members write to Danielle, write to me all the time. Right. And uh, you know, we do our best to give you answers. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and by the way, it's good material for us because then we can use that material for webinars. So it's great. This is uh, our schedule for the last half of the season. Uh, we just uh, gave a webinar tonight. Um, and uh, we'll continue this season. And then in July, we start a brand new season of problem solving sessions. Mm -hmm. And these are actually problem solving sessions direct with our members. Here are the problems we have, and then here are the solutions that Danielle and I are coming up to, uh, to help help those uh, members work work through their problems. So it's going to be directly oriented to you. Stephen Pressfield wrote, a professional does not hesitate to ask for help. A student of the game knows that the levels of revelation that can unfold when he asks for help are inexhaustible. There are answers. And there are answers that, that uh, 
that you can develop. And one of the ways in which you can get answers is by becoming a member of the IDS. Michael actually had uh, Danielle into his office to train, train his staff. Uh, Michael opened up a new uh, dental implant center and prior to opening up, uh, Danielle worked with the staff. And Michael's been our has been a longtime member. I think Michael's a charter member. He started mm -hmm. right when we started. Yes, he did. Yeah. Stephen is uh, is a periodontist outside of um, of uh, Philadelphia, and uh, you can see what Stephen has written. A periodontist when he, when he joined us a few years ago, he'd been in practice for about ten years. Marvin is uh, is is hired an associate, and Marvin is growing his practice. He's uh, outside of New York City. And, um, and Marvin has been with us from, mm -hmm. from the beginning. And Rob is in a smaller city in ten Tennessee, and uh, Rob has been able to, to, uh, to grow his practice as well. Um, so yeah, older, younger, big city, smaller city. We've got Chicago, we've got New York, I mean, we've got big cities and we have smaller Atlanta, we've got, and we've got a smaller smaller communities as well. This The techniques that we talk about are universal. Yes, yeah, so there's going to be individual ways that you're going to, uh, you're going to put in the techniques. Yes, you're going to try things just like we did, but we don't want you to try things that we've done and already failed at. Try things that we've already done. If you want to tweak them a little bit, you can do that. But there are some strategies that we know that work, and on the other side, there are strategies we know that don't. So all of this is 297 a month. And that essentially means you can join. There's no contracts. But you can stay for as long as you like, um, and you'll get all of these features for only $2.97 a month. Uh, and have recordings that you can keep forever, uh, that you can use not only for training your current staff, but a year from now, you can use the, the, those same recordings to, yep. to train your new staff. And of course, try us for a month, two months, and we recommend at least two months uh, so that you can get a flavor of it. And uh, if you decide, hey, it's just not been worth it to me, then, then uh, we'll, we'll give you your money back. As a bonus, we are offering now a 30-minute practice analysis. Each of us have different problems. We're not all the same. This is not cookie cutter. And so uh, Daniel and I will spend a half an hour with you discussing your problems to see what solutions that we might be able to derive. And so uh, by, by joining uh, uh, now, you'll get that 30 mm -hmm. minute practice analysis. So we thank you for being a part uh, of, of this webinar. We hope we've been able to give you some good information. You'll notice in the tray on uh, the GoToWebinar tray, you'll notice there is a place for handouts. Those handout, if, if you click on that, you'll see a registration form. Uh, just download that, uh, fill out the registration form, um, uh, email it or fax it to us, and you'll be part of the IDS like so many others uh, are. And we hope that you'll uh, you'll choose to do so and find that you get great benefits out of, of being of being a part of that uh, of our organization. Um, that's it for tonight's uh, webinar. We hope you've ha had a good time, um, and we look forward to seeing you again real soon. Have a great night. Night.